Yep. Okay. All right. Well, so I'll go ahead and get started. So welcome. And I know we're going to have people joining um, <clears throat> later, but welcome everybody. Um, and I'd like to thank Nicole Gross with the Amputee Coalition to come and speak to us today about um, where to find resources, how to access support um, through the Amputee Coalition and just all of the um, awesome resources that they have. And I thought it would be really interesting for Nicole to give a little bit of background on herself and how she came to the Amputee Coalition, what she does at the Amputee Coalition and um, how long she's been there. So Nicole, okay. if you'll take it away, that'd be awesome. Sure, thank you for the opportunity. It's nice to talk with you all. I know a couple familiar faces and hope to get to know more of you as we do more of these in the future. Um, but I've been with the coalition since January of 2018 after working in the health and fitness industry and working with the YMCA overseeing their event series in support of their mission. Um, so I lived in Charlotte for about 15 years and got connected to the limb loss and limb difference community through my track on coaching career. I was um, introduced to a young lady around my age who reached out to me to help learn how to swim. I have a swimming background and was promoted as her kind of go-to swim coach to help her learn how to swim for the very first time and actually learned that she was doing this a couple months after undergoing an above knee amputation and she wanted to achieve her goal of completing her first sprint paratriathlon. So she opened my eyes and it was a wonderful friendship that has blossomed into peer mentorship because back in 2013, I was um, personally impacted with my family being injured in the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings and had no idea that my professional and personal connections would be rooted so deeply that it allowed me to feel that the tragedy that happened to my family and I and so many other injured survivors and the 17 who lost limbs due to the tragedy and the four who lost their lives. I just felt like I had a deeper purpose and wanted to do more to help a community that I was already connected with. And so there was an opportunity to join the peer support team with the coalition and we packed up our growing family and moved and I've been with the peer support department um, since then, starting out in the peer support coordinator role where I helped connect people with our certified peer visitors and support groups, and then moved into the role of peer support programs manager where I could help expand the reach of our peer support programs that includes our certified peer visitor program, our national support group network, and our hospital partnership program. And I'm now the strategic partnership with the coalition and really oversee the hospital partnership program and are finding strategic ways to expand our reach to serve the patient population either prior to an amputation or soon thereafter and also help the families and those that are born with the limb difference to ensure that they have the support and the connection to amputee coalition patient resources during the most vulnerable stages and as someone that can relate to the trying times in the hospital um, you may or may not want the support or the resources right then and there, but when you do return home, you might have a change in mindset and want to connect with the community. And after receiving so much support from our communities through the connection with the Boston Marathon, it just makes sense that we really try our best to reach more people where they are, especially in rural populations that may never get to one of our events or our in-person trainings. And since the COVID-19 pandemic took place, we just really saw silver linings in some of our virtual support offerings. So I know some of you actually attend our Tea Time Tuesdays and our virtual support group meetings where we can help connect our peer visitors and those that are um, in need of community connections where their support group may still not be meeting in person. So we're just trying right now to make sure that we are helping to educate and raise awareness, especially with April being a significant month for the amputee coalition. It's always the anniversary of my personal tragedy and it's also occupational therapy awareness month as well. So this is a great time and opportunity to highlight ways that we can collaborate and do more for the bilateral upper limb community members and their families. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, sorry, I was on mute for a second. I um, had asked Nicole to come and kind of share um, information about how people can navigate through the MPT Coalition's website or um, how to find resources. And so I, I think, um, I don't know if it's, uh, if I, do we get you the ability mm -hmm. to share your screen, Nicole? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you want to does anyone have any questions so far for Nicole or can she start launching into her uh, PowerPoint? 
think I think you're good to go. All right, so this will be a brief PowerPoint. Um, I think as we evolve this and hopefully do more of these together, we um, will have some different messaging as we are always doing great work, always making updates and great changes within um, our various departments. So I just wanna highlight our important mission that includes the limb loss and limb difference community from all levels and causes. We're reaching out and empowering people impacted by limb loss to achieve their full potential through education, support, and advocacy, and to promote limb loss prevention. The MPT Coalition is the leading national nonprofit supporting the 2.1 million Americans living with limb loss and limb difference, the 28 million more who are at risk for amputation, and the 185,000 Americans who undergo an amputation surgery every year. So on this screen is kind of a snippet from one of our infographics that we help promote during the month of April for Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. There is a lot more information that you can find on our Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month webpage, but these are the highlights of statistics that are ever growing and ever changing as we learn more and more about our community. Um, so this highlights the 2.1 people living with limb loss, the 185,000 amputations that occur each year, the 40% increase in healthcare costs for those living with limb loss and limb difference. And we know due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the need for more mental health awareness that the 36% of people living with limb loss and limb difference living with depression might be slightly higher now than when these statistics were going out. So through our work through education, support, connection, and advocacy, we try our best to reach people where they are. And in the virtual environment, we're finding that there are definitely ways that we're reaching more and more people over this past year. The coalition exists with people such as those on this call that are living with limb difference, limb loss, both upper limb and lower limb. Their family members, friends, and caregivers also can receive our resources and connection to peer support services. And through my work with our hospital partnership program, we are working closely with clinicians, hospitals and rehab centers. And we have a growing team within our research and education department that is helping to facilitate research studies surrounding peer support and other um, valuable surveys. And then we also work with students who express an interest in learning more about our community and working closely in the prosthetic care industry, and then also closely connect with nonprofit partners. So through our education, this screen highlights some of our resource center um, patient resources that are offered free to community members, our partners, um, and allied health professionals that reach out to us in need of patient resources. We have a bi-monthly magazine called In Motion that is a free subscription. If you reach out to our information and referral specialist team from our website, you're able to receive these on a bi-monthly basis. And if you have never received our patient resources, if you contact our resource center, we'll be happy to send you a customized um, new amputee packet that would contain a first step guide, which is basically that first year and a half of the most frequently asked questions that people typically ask. Um, it also includes our in motion magazine, our insurance and reimbursement guides, and then some of additional sample resources are our upper limb booklets, our in motion, or I'm sorry, our below knee booklet, our above knee booklet, and our caregiver booklet. Um, we have established research partnerships to help understand more and more about our community members. So if you are interested in becoming part of a research study or a community survey, I'd love to connect you with our research and education team soon after this Zoom webinar. And then as we hope to resume in-person gatherings, one of the ways that we help with our education outreach is through Limb Loss Education Days, where we typically will have six select cities throughout each year where we will come locally and host um, a morning session full of educational seminars, followed by an afternoon of adaptive activities such as rock climbing or indoor cycling or swimming, um, self-defense workshops. And those are held each year. We're hoping to transition those to a virtual environment, but we also hope that it can be safe to resume these in-person gatherings so that we can help provide local connections and raise awareness and education through our LLEDs. And in support, 
Um, we have over 400 registered support groups with our national support group network, many of which are switching over to virtual, but we also know that some have been impacted by COVID-19 and have not been able to switch to a Zoom meeting or other virtual means. So the amputee coalition has actually implemented for the very first time our own virtual support group meetings for those that are living with limb loss and limb difference and their families. Those are held on Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. at different time zones. And back in January, we implemented and expanded our virtual support group meetings to the caregiver support, where on the second Wednesday of each month at 6 p.m. Central Time, we are providing an exclusive caregiver only group so that we can be intentional about the journey that caregivers are on, where they can ask questions with other parents, other spouses, other family members, so that they can have the most meaningful support, so they can provide the most support to their loved ones. We have currently partnered with nearly 70 hospitals and rehab facilities throughout the country where we can embed our certified peer visitor programs and connection to our patient resources and support groups through a free partnership that is offered um, to both children's hospitals and military hospitals and veteran hospitals and those that are serving the adult community. We currently have over a thousand peer visitors that are able to meet with individuals and families during the most vulnerable times of need. And at the end of this presentation, I'll put a couple links into the chat where you can either request a peer visit, learn how to become a certified peer visitor, learn more about our support app that can provide virtual in-app text messaging and in-app video messaging and other things. So the benefits of peer support for anyone who has not had a direct connection with someone who can truly relate to living with bilateral upper limb loss or multi-level limb loss or limb difference, there is a healthy mindset and healthier lifestyle choices that come when you're connected with a peer. You can gain a better sense of community and feel a renewed sense of purpose. There also are studies that show a decrease in hospital readmissions when connected to peer support. And there's also an increase in the patient's self-advocacy and self-determination. And this goes on both sides of the person providing the peer support, as well as the person receiving the peer support. And through our connections, through our flagship events, we have been able to really impact um, a large number of our communities that um, may feel that they are the only ones on their journey. And we help open eyes both from our young campers ages 10 through 17 who get a chance to come to our Patty Rostock Youth Camp every year for a one week um, truly a typical camp experience away from home, sometimes for the very first time, away from their mobile devices, and get a chance to connect with a lot of young campers just like themselves. Uh, we get a lot of powerful stories where some kids come wearing their pants and feel a little bit more shy and um, not completely comfortable in their own skin. And by the end of that first week, they're smiling, have made lifelong friends and come back feeling more comfortable wearing shorts. We have been able to pivot our youth camp to a virtual environment uh, last year due to the impact of COVID. And we're also offering this as a virtual experience for this coming summer. And the registration for both our youth camp and national conference will be coming soon. So if you're not connected to the Amputee Coalition to receive our email communication, we'd love to receive your contact information. So as soon as registration comes out for both our youth camp and our national conference, if you have an interest or if you know somebody that would like to attend, we'd love to make sure that we can get the registration information out to you. And our advocacy has been growing in very big ways um, due to the increased need and the increased awareness of the drastic needs for insurance fairness and communicating what those living with limb loss and limb difference truly need in order to thrive. Back in July of 2020, the Senate introduced the Access to Assistive Technology and Devices for the American Study Act, also known as the AAA Study Act with bipartisan support. This will help to raise visibility through the Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month that is held each April. A uh, couple weeks ago, we held a virtual advocacy forum that provided training to help certify lead advocates to empower themselves with education and advocacy tools so that they can be empowered to connect with their local government agencies and impact change locally, state-based and national. 
And the Amplify is a way that we can get our community to share their story. So if you are currently waiting to have your voice heard, we have opportunities that I'll share at the end of this call for how you can help raise awareness and get your voice heard, share your story, and help influence change in a local and national way. And as mentioned, the month of April is Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. And we hope that we can resume to our more in-person gatherings where we can help provide support groups with an opportunity to do local gatherings and help raise awareness in their local communities. We do offer free awareness ribbons every single year. So that can be a small token of how you can stay connected to our mission, but also have a great talking point um, for those that have no idea about the Amputee Coalition or about the needs of the Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. This month, we're currently using the Moments That Matter as our theme. And you'll find on our website that there's a place to share stories. So if you'd like to spend the next couple of days before the month of April is done to share your moments that matter of a time that either you were impacted by somebody who provided great support, if you were connected with somebody who truly made a difference in your healthcare or your recovery um, during your hospital stay or rehabilitation time, we'd love to hear your moments that matter, both the good times and the dark times that more people need to hear about so that we can ensure that nobody feels alone on their journey. And this slide is just a couple of ways to help you get connected to the Amputee Coalition. We have a toll-free number, 888, 267-5669. And you can also go to our website at www.amputee-coalition.org. And if you have connections with local hospitals or rehab facilities, I personally would love to connect with you so that we can help ensure that your local hospitals and rehabilitation centers are informed about the patient resources and the connection to peer support services that we can provide. So that link will direct you to a place where you can learn more about our hospital partnership program, but you can also email partners at amputee-coalition.org. And we'd also love for you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. And that is a brief, brief overview. We do a lot more, but I want to make sure that we devote some time for Q&A and talk in more detail about anything that you guys have a vast interest in learning more about. And Nicole, that, would you be able to go to your website and just kind of do a quick navigation around there as well? Yes, absolutely. That would be stop awesome. sharing my screen. And, and I love the presentation. That was fabulous. Like that is such a great, like if you mm -hmm. could email that to people so that they could share it too, or I don't know if you're allowed to, yeah. but I think it's, it's a really good resource. Thank you. I will be happy to do that. <clears throat> um, just so while you're navigating to your website, I was going to ask a few questions. Um, mm -hmm. When you mentioned connecting folks from our um, Skills for Life community to a research contact, are you a member of our Skills for Life closed group yet? Oh wait, you went away. Why did I? Why did you go mute? Hold on a second. I, I put myself on mute. Sorry. Okay. Um, so I'll need to. No, I'm not. But I would are love you to. Are on be. Facebook? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so at, I'll need to send you the link because I want to add you to that group um, because when you have research opportunities for our particular community, it would be great for you to post them in that group. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect. And uh, rather than you know me being a go-between. And then um, the, you mentioned the support group, the online support group that you guys have started doing on Thursday nights. We, um, I have missed that information. So any information you can post in the chat bar or, or again, post in the closed group when, when after you get added, that would be great. I'll be happy to. So this link has been updated to highlight both the Thursday evening and the Caregiver Wednesday. Um, there are individual registration links right now, just because when we were first starting, we wanted to make sure that um, we figured out how to do Zoom meetings. So unfortunately, if you want to attend all of them, there's five different links. But once you do that one time, you won't have to register for each one. But we find that they're very meaningful times for um, people that have gone through an amputation and are still at a hospital, and if they're affiliated with one of our hospital partners, the hospital's giving them an iPad and they're sitting in their hospital bed 
moments after having a surgery, if they are desperately needing to talk to somebody to get through an overwhelming time or make sure that they're getting um, questions answered, people are hopping on our Zoom meetings when they're still in the hospital, which is amazing. Oh, great. All right, so that's one link. Um, and then while we're at it, for anybody that has an interest in becoming a certified peer visitor, I just wanna highlight that we have had our trainings on hold since March of last year due to the um, impact of COVID and just wanting to safely ensure that the volunteers and the patients are not at risk. Um, we're also making some curriculum updates. So we're changing the format of our classes as we know that there's value in hosting virtual classes for the very first time. We're trying to figure out a way to offer virtual classes and then hopefully resume to safely offer the in-person classes. But I think as we see the need for virtual, that is gonna help us expand our reach in more ways than we've ever had before because we've only offered them in person and we know we can't be in every city and every state every single year. So hopefully you all have an interest if you're not already a certified peer visitor of joining one of our virtual meetings. Um, and if we are not connected with you already where you're receiving our emails, we'd love to make sure that you get on our waiting list if you have an interest. And the great news is, while it's also hoping to switch to virtual and a hybrid experience, we have no longer, uh, we're no longer offering registration fees. So there used to be a $40 registration fee for the volunteer to help cover administration costs and the background checks. We've been able to get that approved to be grant funded through our federal grant funder. Um, so that's been a big win for us where I think we can help really reach more people where there's not a financial barrier anymore. And so between the class registration fees going away, the background check fees going away, recertification fees every two years have also gone away and virtual. I think we have an opportunity to really reach a lot more people and also to diversify and expand our roster so that we can ensure, especially for our hospital partners, that they can connect patients with every type of limb loss, with every type of cause, a wide range of demographics for the patients to be connected with certified peer visitors. So I think we have a great opportunity to really expand the reach of our programs and also have a more diverse and inclusive roster of peer visitors. Awesome. Um, and then the other helpful link is if you are interested in receiving a peer visit, if you've never connected with anybody one-on-one -on -one and you'd like to see what it's like to talk to another person with bilateral upper limb loss due to a similar cause, or if you don't care about the level of limb loss and you just wanna to talk to somebody about learning how to do or resume back to a hobby or be introduced to a new hobby, any type of request we will accept um, so that we can help match people and help them talk about things that they are wanting to talk about if they're having issues with pain, if they're wanting to talk to somebody who's undergone limb salvage surgery and is contemplating an amputation, we will take every bit of requests and do the very best we can to connect them with the most fit um, certified peer visitor. And that goes in line with, um, we have junior certified peer visitors. So if there's a young patient that wants to talk to another child ages 13 through 17, right now those are um, our junior certified peer visitors. And we can also provide connections to caregiver support too. So the parents can talk to other parents, um, spouses can talk to other spouses, siblings can talk to other siblings too. And then we also offer through our partnership with the VA and the Department of Defense, connections with veteran CPVs and military CPVs. Um, and I will also highlight that we do have a strategic partnership um, in the pediatric space with MIB agents who help kids with osteosarcoma and those that are impacted by limb loss become part of our certified peer visitor program so that we can serve the um, vulnerable times relating to the um, long journey and the trying journey for both the caregivers and the young patients that are undergoing um, an amputation due to osteosarcoma, which is a rare bone cancer found in pediatric patients. All and amazing resources. I don't know, are you um, able to um, get on and share mm -hmm. your screen for the I can. Website? So if I share my screen now, I will get you all to the main part of our website on how to find support is on this page right here. Aww. Can you all see me? Yes, can we can see your, your okay. arrow. Perfect. There's Mike too. Yeah, there's Mike. And Chrissy. 
Chrissy Casel and Mike St. Owens. They live both in, they live in, they both live in Tucson now. Chrissy moved from Pennsylvania to Tucson this year. Oh, it is, it's nice to see all of the presentations. I, I see familiar names and faces and it's neat to see the connection between enhancing skills for life and the MPT coalition. So yeah. something's clicking and I, I love that. Um, so this is our, how to find support. So on this screen, um, you will find this in various places. Um, but if you go to the What We Do tab, you'll find everything that relates to support groups and peer support under What We Do. So much about our National Limb Loss Resource Center can be found on the far left column relating to asking information and referral specialists. So if you want to request um, patient resource information, if you need information about adaptive clothing, home modifications, obtaining a driver's license after limb loss, um, mental health um, fact sheets, pediatric fact sheets. Our ask and information and referral specialist is kind of our main form that feeds from the resource center and they can disperse out um, different requests. Um, but this particular form or webpage on how to find support will give you a connection to the request a peer visit. And then it also highlights the support app. And I'll mention that because it is a free download through the Apple App Store and Google Play, but it's also a web browser link um, which is right here at cpvapp.amputee-coalition.org. And this is a place for um, our certified peer visitors to report their peer visits. And it's also a way for the community members that we um, label them in our classes as visitees. The visitee side can help where right now the visitees can connect with the coalition and send us an in-app message that they want to connect with somebody who can relate. Um, and this is a place that they can also connect directly with a certified peer visitor all within the app. And that's where the in-app text messaging and the in-app video chatting can happen. And then our support group network continues to grow. Um, we're actually moving a lot of our support groups over to community connections, which I'll highlight over in the resource um, center section in just a little bit. But this is a place where if you go to the support group network, you can type in your zip code and see a list of local support groups within a 10 mile radius all the way up to 500 miles. And then these are where you can find our social media pages. And again, this connects you back to the ask and information referral specialist. And then I will go into community connections. This is our new online database where enhancing skills for life is listed on there with appropriate tags. So for anybody that's um, wanting to find resources relating to bilateral upper limb loss, you will find enhancing skills for life here. It's a similar place like our support group network where it's based on a person typing in their zip code and then it'll pull local state and national resources. This is also in a secondary place where our hospital partners will um, are listed. So if you need to be connected with any local resource or a hospital or a support group in your area, this is a valuable place and, and a great go-to to find local resources based on certain topics that you're interested in. And this is ultimately what it looks like. And I need to move my screen. Um, so this is just kind of where you need to get to and type in this main box. <clears throat> Let's see if this works. I can't see my screen very well. So if there's errors, I can't see past my screen. This is kind of what happens when you search um, either a, an organization or a zip code. You'll find national resources listed, crisis lines, and then any nonprofits or organizations that we have um, any connections or collaborations or partnerships with, they will be listed here as well. And I'll go ahead and show you enhancing skills for life.
This is also a great place for people to find um, organizations that help with financial assistance. So you'll see these tags listed here. Um, so our resource center manager, her name is Caitlin, has taken a lot of time to put a ton of different tags in here. If there are suggestions from this community to help us be more intentional for your needs as living with bilateral upper limb loss, please let us know this is something that we have an opportunity to work more closely with Enhancing Skills for Life to ensure that the upper limb community has the resources that they need. So this is not exclusive to just being amputee coalition tags. If um, Sean, you have um, a need to see more to help us actually reach the resources to your community, we would love your feedback. Um, but I won't spend too much time here, but Enhancing Skills for Life is listed. Um, but I think there's a great opportunity to collaborate to ensure that we have more upper limb resources listed. That's amazing, all the work that's been put into that. Um, and I do think, you know, identifying tags that are specific to our group is fabulous. I love that, um, you know, even if you, because uh, a lot of these are nationally based and some that like some of them that are locally mm -hmm. based, but when it's something that it we impact in, international folks as well. So it's, mm -hmm. I think, let's see, yeah, you've got the bilateral upper limb loss, quad limb loss, mm -hmm. rehabilitation. Those are some good tags. Um, I'm sure that we can come up with others and I'll work with Perfect. some folks to figure that out. But yeah, that's awesome. Good, glad that we could, glad that the screen sharing works where I can actually navigate through our website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other thing that is valuable is our community events portal. This is a new way that we are helping um, anyone that is offering a virtual or in-person event that our community can benefit from knowing about. Um, if Enhancing Skills for Life is gonna offer other webinars or I know there are workshops in the future, we have a system now where you can submit an event and it gets reviewed and approved for accuracy with our resource center manager. And this is the form that you can go to to submit all the details, including um, files, if you have images or if you have a JPEG of the flyer for the event. So this is a new process that we have implemented so that we can highlight more things on our community events cal or, uh, calendar so that more and more people can know about other events that aren't run by the Amputee Coalition um, so this would be a great opportunity if you and a support group are hosting an event or another organization that you learn about that we may not learn about, um, we would love to make sure that we really flood this information with both virtual and in-person events. Um, and then other resources, just quickly from webinars, this is a place for any webinar that the Amputee Coalition has hosted this is where past webinars will live. So if there are additional resources that you all find valuable, you can go to this part of our website and watch some of these past webinars. We did something on our support app last, last April. Um, we highlighted the month of um, April for Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month, and we did something on advocacy. So these are additional um, educational webinars that um, you all can look at if you're interested in learning more about. And then I will highlight, just because it's part of my role, our hospital partnership webpage. Um, there is a brochure that is highlighting the upgraded benefits to the hospital partnership program. And I'm not sure if you all can still see this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a brochure that I'd be happy to mail out to each of you because I know it's a large file and it's not very user-friendly for home computers. But this is a great resource to deliver to primary care physicians, your dentist, your physical therapist, your occupational therapist, your hospital, your rehab, nursing homes, anybody that can really help a patient throughout their journey with limb loss. This highlights the benefits of becoming a hospital partner. And it highlights right now the number of states that are represented with a hospital partner. Those states are in blue and the grade areas, we probably have leads in all of them, but they are taking a little bit of time to move through the agreement review process, or we simply need stronger leads so that we can um, secure at least one hospital in all 50 states. 
Um, so my contact information is at the on the back page of the brochure. And so that's an easy way if you drop these brochures off. If they send me an email, the next step that I take is send them more appropriate hospital partner documents that includes the agreement. And then um, I can talk with the hospital leadership team and make sure that everything is um, underway and they have all their questions answered and they have a better understanding about um, the benefits of being a hospital partner, whether they are a hospital or a rehab facility, if they're children's based or serving the adult community. And then as our, um, our, as our events start coming underway, we will be putting information about registration for a national conference under our events and programs section. Um, right now, we are slated to be in Schaumburg, Illinois at the end of September, September 29th through October 2nd. But right now, we are very much paying attention to CDC guidelines to determine if it is the safest um, decision to go in person or if we um, take another year to offer it virtually or if it's a hybrid component. Last year, when we went virtual, we actually had a record number of community members who were living with limb loss and limb difference actually be able to attend our national conference. So again, another silver lining that if we go virtual, we can reach more of our community members where they are with less um, issues relating to travel or financial barriers. So more details to come with that. And I know that Enhancing Skills for Life does a great job of promoting our national conference, which we greatly appreciate. And then this is the section for Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. So this is where you'll see the theme for Moments That Matter. This blue box is where you'll submit your stories. So if you would like to take time over the next few days before the month of April quickly runs out, this is a place that you can share a story, record a video, and submit it to the Amputee Coalition, and your, your story will be well received and, and used for helping to ensure that nobody feels alone because they can see these um, meaningful moments that matter. Hey, Nicole, will that be up after April, but, or will it go away after April, the end of April? That's a good question, and I will make sure to get that answer over to you before okay. April 30th. I would hope that it would stay up, but I will just right. check with our communications team. Yep. Um, and then let's see what else is over. This has been incredibly helpful because I, I've gone through the website several times, um, it, you know, by myself, but having you walk us through it is, uh, way more helpful um, because when I try to surf, I, I'm it's not um, purposeful. It's just random. Mm -hmm. So this, this has been very helpful. You're welcome. I know our, our website can be a, a little overwhelming. So I'm just trying to highlight the main places that people um, are reaching out to us for. And I, I will go right into advocacy forum because the AAA Study Act is a very big deal. It's helping to really influence change. And right now, your voice is the most powerful way that legislation can actually make change and hear the needs of our community. Um, so this um, orange button will actually go to the place where you can go fill out your name and connect with your local um, representatives and it's all built out as a template for you and there is a section on this page that you can actually share more personal stories um, and so this would be something I would say if you are wanting to help make a difference this is a great place to do it um, so I would kind of flag this in the chat here at the end of this call of go to this website and get your voice heard and help co-sponsor the AAA Study Act by asking your senators and representatives. Perfect. Um, and then I guess the last question is, is there, is there anything else that somebody wants to see on this call that I can navigate through while we're doing this? If you all want a subscription to our In Motion magazine, it's at the top right. If you have questions, this is our main ask and information and referral specialist form. So a lot of these top sections lead you to places of um, the most interest or the most inquiries that we receive. So this is the form that actually reaches our National Limb Loss Resource Center um, where you can receive packets of our information, 
Um, you can also just type in a question. I need my home to be modified, help. I need my car to be modified. How do I get help? I need financial assistance for a prosthesis. Well, we cannot do that ourselves. We will provide fact sheets for additional um, ways that you can be connected to what you're exactly looking for. I think Karen might've had a question or she at least unmuted. So I'm not sure, I don't wanna put her on the spot. I do have a quick one. Nicole, is there an easy way to kind of know all the related um, materials that could be mailed for upper limb folks? Yes, I will go to our store. Um, there is a place that you all can place orders yourself or simply review. And, and actually we have, a. if you guys hear this in the background, it's my Huskies wrestling around. I'm so sorry. Um, so this is a summary of all of our resources in English. The same ones are listed in Spanish. So if you scroll all the way to the middle, this is our upper limb amputation booklet. And this basically gives you an introduction to anybody that's lost an upper limb. Right now, this booklet is all encompassing. We're working to make sure that upper limb has more um, defined um, needs for those that are relating to partial hand, hand, wrist dis disarticulation, below elbow, above elbow, shoulder disarticulation. So we are working to enhance this booklet. And I think there's gonna be some valued um, takeaways that we reach out to those that are living with an upper limb loss or limb difference to help build out some more publications to ensure that this particular booklet covers every bit of your needs um, if you are living with upper, upper limb loss. Perfect. Um, but I will make sure that uh, Sean receives the request a sample resource kit um, because that is a, or it's a, a handout. It's a PDF that can be shared where if you just have a select um, resources that you would like to receive, um, you can check off those boxes, but also in the ask an information and referral specialist form, when you're looking to make a customized um, request for resources, if you indicate your level of limb loss or your type of limb loss, those will automatically, these booklets would automatically be going into those sample resource kits for you. Perfect. And if there are other areas I can navigate through, I am very happy to do it. But otherwise, this is our main page. You'll see a lot of our main forms that are just fed into the main page. You don't necessarily have to navigate through all the different tabs, but if you wanna to connect to the resource center, it's this top left middle button or the top left button in the middle section. Requesting a peer visit is the middle box. Anything about advocacy, click on the top right. The AAA Study Act is conveniently placed in the very middle as well as the um, moments that matter for the month of April. I, I love it all. I'm, this was uh, way more helpful than I thought it I, I knew it was going to be helpful, but I, way, way more helpful than I expected. So it's perfect, so the, the presentation and the um, navigating through the website. You're very welcome. Well, we are here to help. Um, I think the more that we can hear from you all, the more that we can um, serve you. And so any feedback that you have, please let us know. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. Let us know what you need, what more we can do. Um, we're here to make sure that um, this particular community gets the right resources and the, and the access to care and the connection to the right peer visitors. Um, so thank you for the opportunity. I think this was really great. Awesome. Um, anyone else have any questions? Um, I will answer Vala's question about the um, international. We do ship to Canada, but that's as far out as our free resources go. So if somebody is willing to pay for the shipping, we are absolutely okay to send those out where the cost of the materials is not of cost, but it would just be the shipping. And as that changes, I will certainly let you all know. Okay. Well, I, yeah, Vala, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just um, wondering on that Triple A Act, how long, has it already gone to Congress? I mean, are they still? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So are they still wanting us to send um, requests or, you know, send input? Yeah, we're still reaching out um, with the same messaging. And as that changes, we will send out some updates along the way to those that um, have reached out or attended our advocacy forum. So we'll be in touch to make sure that you all get updated information after um, we get a little bit further along. I'm not sure when that that is officially closing, but I do know that we're still encouraging people to, to reach out if they haven't already done okay. so. All right, thank you. All right, well, thank you again, Nicole. This is awesome. Um, and yeah, if we have interest in setting up another one, but the recording should suffice as well, but thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you for the opportunity and look forward to doing this again soon. Yeah, and I'll be talking to you hopefully soon um, about support and outreach stuff. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you guys. Thanks everybody. Have a good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Yeah. Enjoy the day. All right, bye.